Good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to the Adafruit Show and Tell. My name is Melissa, and tonight I'll be hosting. We're going to start out with uh, Jeff uh, Epler here, and I'll bring him onto the screen. Hi. So uh, as I mentioned on a couple of show and tells recently, I'm going through some vintage 80s computer stuff. And I ran across this book from Elephant Memory Systems. Their slogan is never forget. And because it was already coming apart, I picked it apart and I've taken some pictures of it. And I remember this brand from the 80s. They made floppy disks and of course they thought theirs were the best. And I just, when I looked inside this uh, little book, I'm just like, I want to share this with people because there doesn't appear to be a scan of it on the internet. So we can bring up my screen uh, share. Here are just some of the quick photos. This is actually um, from Family Computing Magazine in, uh, I guess I didn't write down the year, but um, issue five. So the truth, the whole truth about floppies, amazing book reveals all for one and one half earth dollars. <laughs> Um, and in Massachusetts, to order it, you can call Collect. So there's a 617 number there for you. But uh, from here on out are photos that I took of the book. It opens with this um, elephant in space with solar panel ear flaps and like some kind of grippy nose and just kind of establishes a, what looks now retro to us. And then there's other weird photographs like a Karelian photograph of this disk shows the magnetic field of 40 million magnetic crystals. That sounds like a lot. And then uh, hard and soft sector disks. Hard sector disks have just totally disappeared from the world by now. But uh, And by the way, Elephant made both kinds of floppies, the five and a quarter and the eight inch ones. The ones you think of might be the three and a half. So this was a long time ago. Uh, parts of the disc label. I like this one. You only need five eight-inch discs, and then you can store. Then you can store the whole Old and New Testament of the standard Christian Bible. So, how's that for information density? And I don't know. The priest here has a little neon neck collar. It looks like. Um, here we have an X-ray of a floppy drive. X-rays, cool. And then this one, I didn't quite understand. They talked about how flat the diskette has to be, and they are using lasers to measure the flatness, uh, which I think in about 1983, lasers were pretty hot technology. And the stresses that the disk are under when they rotate at 300 RPM, if, it, if your disk is not perfect, if it's not an elephant, um, you just might have trouble. There's a whole list of the tests that they do. They measure for extra bits and missing bits, the smoothness, the substrate material, the coefficients of expansion, they just measure everything. There's a lot of these cute little uh, elephant arts throughout the book. And then at the end, the elephants have successfully reached the moon and they're looking back at Earth. So I hope in the next couple of weeks to actually do a high resolution scan of each page uh, and put that up on archive.org. But for right now, I will just share a link to this album on uh, our Discord. And yeah, that's what I'm up to reading vintage paper computer stuff uh, that isn't anywhere on the internet that I can find. Nice. And did you uh, have a video that you wanted to show? Yeah, let's come back and do that in a minute uh, if we are uh, short on people. Um, or okay. do you want to just do that now? That's great. Yeah, too. let's just do it. It's a short one. So. All right. Yeah. Hey, Jeffler, what have we got here? Well, this is my friend's uh, Kim One, which we have just gotten running today. And so we've already put in a program in hexadecimal to add two numbers together. So uh, let's see, we are gonna set the numbers to add though. So we're gonna go to address zero and enter some data. And why not add 37 and 12 and then this, is the first byte of our program at address two, and so I will hit go. And with any luck, those numbers that I said add together to 49 in hexadecimal. And that is a real program running on a real original Kim One. Yeah, so the Kim One is, I think, the very first computer, and I have to put that in, in air quotes, made with the 6502 microprocessor, which was later famous for being in the Apple one, Apple II, Commodore 64, and a bunch of others. 
And um, this is uh, like a real vintage, older than the Apple One computer. And it was just a blast to be able to hook it up, power it on, and still have it work, uh, which was amazing. Um, yeah, so that's another thing that I had going on recently. So thanks for letting me share that. Yeah, that was like a lot of fun. So, um, thank you. So, All right. Uh, so next I'm going to go ahead and we had John Park uh, drop in here really quick. So I'm going to add him. Hey, hello. Hi. So it is uh, crazy hot here in Southern California. They're asking us to reduce our power consumption to try to prevent rolling blackouts. So I turned off the uh, AC in my workshop, and so I'm uh, inside the house where it's nice and cool, but that way I'm not cooling a second building. Uh, and so what I wanted to show, though, is I've been working a few weeks ago. I showed I was working on uh, essentially an MP3 player that I'm calling the Walk Person. Uh, and I just recently went from that version of it, which was on a couple breadboards. Uh, I've stolen the TFT display that was there. Uh, as well as the um, buttons and knob for it. And I have now transplanted them into this beautiful case that was uh, designed and sent to me by Noe. Uh, it's a little blown out. Let me just see if I can tweak my, my camera settings here. I'm not used to broadcasting from in here. So uh, bear with me one second and I'll try to adjust the uh, exposure there. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's a lot better. Uh, so you can see here, I've got this uh, this great looking case for it. All of those guts uh, are crammed in there. And what this is, is a Feather RP2440. Uh, there's an SD card reader that's built into the display. So I got this nice display here. Uh, and here I have the SD card reader extender. So we can treat the SD cards essentially as mixtapes. Uh, when I power it up, it just checks for MP3s and then it includes those in the list of things it can play. Uh, right now, I've got it plugged into some external speakers, but ideally, you'll have uh, some, some headphones for it. I got some really cheap old-school Walkman-style headphones on Amazon for like eight bucks. Uh, and I've also got a, a volume knob here that's a little rotary coder. These are some of our Neo-Key switches. Uh, so if I go ahead and hit play, and you'll see we have progress bar that's going to march across as the song plays. And if I tweak the volume, you'll see that. Uh, vertical progress bar doing its thing. Uh, one thing I can't stand is when rotary coders are used as volume knobs, especially on car stereos instead of potentiometers, and they don't have enough granularity, so you can't get it to where you want. There's like 10 steps on it. So you can see I made mine have a lot of steps uh, of granularity for adjusting volume. Uh, so we can hit fast forward, go to the next song. Turn that up first. And we go backwards. And I can just stop it there. And then if we turn it off, uh, there's a nice little recessed switch here for turning powering it down. Take out the SD card, put in a different tape, uh, and, and away we go. So uh, that is the guide I'm working on. I just took photos of this today as I assembled it. And I'll be putting Learn Guide together. The code is up now for the Learn Guide called Walk Person with person spelled with MP3 in there. So you'll find it. Uh, and uh, so that's the project. That's what I'm working on. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I like how the uh, volume works. Uh, have you thought about maybe like making it so it does different granularities by clicking on the into the button or anything like that? If it did, I'm sorry, I missed that. Different, different what? Does does the uh, is it a clickable button for the knob? The encoder is yeah, and I and I have left that as an exercise to the user to use that for something. I thought mute might be nice on that, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't add that before I had uploaded uh, the code and decided to be lazy and, and let people decide what they want to use that for. So um, you, could, you could use that for, for different things. It'd be interesting to see what people do. Uh, you can go in there and adjust the code. I put a little simple graphic there. I'm not trying to animate that graphic, but I was uh, really excited to use these um, progress bars. There's a library for CircuitPython that's called the progress bar library. There's a horizontal progress bar, vertical, and you can adjust uh, their size, what they respond to. But they seemed to work great without any like glitches in my audio because that was something I was worried about is, is taxing the, the system. 
Uh, I didn't come up with a good way to do like big animated graphics on the screen uh, without running into issues. Um, I'm sure it's possible, but uh, I was I was content with just having a simple uh, stationary graphic of the tapes and then just move those two little things around. That's really good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And next up, we have Charlene on uh, and. Hello. Hi, do you want to show us what you have? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I published a new guide today and it's for this little thing. It's a uh, little LED cube made with dot star matrices and it has, it's connected to Wi-Fi. So uh, if you give it a little bit, it should finish its request. Of course, it like stops working right as I get online, but it's powered by the ESB uh, 32S3. Um, so it has uh, Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, um, it has an accelerometer in there. So if I, I might have to reset this thing, but if I do this, no, no, no. Wow, it hates me. Okay, we're gonna restart again. Um, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, this is all off the shelf parts. Um, and it is definitely one of my maker dreams. Um, I have, let me show my face here. Yeah, I have, yeah. I've been waiting to be able to actually make something like this uh, without needing custom PCBs because I don't know how to make my own PCBs. Um, so it was really, really fun to be able to at least uh, get that, get that going with all of the parts that are off the shelf. Um, Do you want to talk about even, like what's in it? Yeah. Um, so I can actually show you another cube here. I really hope that our internet is not down. So that's, that's why it's like maybe a little broken, but um, it has a uh, ESP32 uh, S3. Actually, this one has an S2. Um, and then it has a little Stemma board in there and then a tiny little battery sandwiched in between. So it's very packed. Um, and these are press fit um, LED matrices in there. Um, so it definitely uh, needs to sort of be sanded a little accurately, but, uh, and, the, and the frame is made of PETG so that uh, if the dot star matrices heat up, um, it doesn't warp as much. And then I put a little switch in there, a uh, little notch for the switch. Um, yeah, it doesn't have a long battery life. I think it has like maybe 20, uh, I want to say maybe like less than an hour, uh, but it's really fun to just be able to even have something like this. And I am kind of really sad that it decided to break right when I had to show it. Is, is it your wife? Well, I mean, you have Wi-Fi because you, I assume yeah. you're connected uh, with your internet right now. Yeah, uh, to exactly. Throw off the video. Yeah, I know it's really it's really unfortunate. Um, but the guide is up. Uh, there's definitely cool um, animations on the guide itself, um, and I also wrote about it on my blog post. I think the one thing that I wanted to maybe share is this um, little web page that I made for it. So. Here is a little thing that you can like draw pictures. Oh, wait, oh, 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 it's happening. Something's happening. Oh, good, oh, good. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> oh, there we go, yay. Oh, here, let me okay, bring you so, back to the full screen here. Yeah, and then maybe I'll get rid of my face here. But yeah, here it is. It is scrolling, oh, the words show and tell. Um, and I can paint a picture using this web page, and then I can send to cube and it'll change. Uh, well, it changed uh, the top one first because uh, it only pulls when the scrolling is done. So now there it is, Adafruit. And then it also has an accelerometer. So I can do this like cool animation when it's, uh, when it's upside down and then go back to the thing. That's it. <laughs> I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it's just super fun to uh, hold. Um, there definitely is some, you know, internet issues to be figured out. But yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. And since it has the ESP32 uh, S2 and S3 in it, 
Uh, that could actually work with the CircuitPython code editor that I've been working on in order to like be able to edit the code without having to worry about any chords or anything. Yeah, agreed. So now you don't have to, I, I put a little notch to like sort of pry it open, but uh, maybe you don't have to if you can just code well, it I mean, wirelessly. You, I mean, you have to charge the battery still, but. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> The next version will have inductive charging, and then you won't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much for letting me show this, and thanks uh, for thank being you. with me. <laughs> and so that's all the people that we have. So we're this is going to be a, a kind of a short show until the day. And so thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have any projects that you want to show off, uh, come back next week. Bye.